Well, hi there. Is anybody else still not used to daylight savings time? It's totally tripping me out. I keep on stretching my days way later because my brain is still like, hey, it's, uh, it's fucking early. Yeah. And that would be a water stain because every day, like an idiot, I drink and I exercise after my physical job. And uh, then I feel like I'm about to die, and I panic, drink water to calm myself down. This happens. Yeah, man. So, again, a couple of days here and there getting missed in terms of my uh, daily vlogging goal I set for myself. But hey, what can you do? We're in a crisis. Speaking of which, Timmy Poole. He keeps on talking about, oh, he was right, and this is happening, and that's happening. And again, with this gentleman, I said, hey, go ahead and buy the stuff he's recommending. Go ahead and prepare food. It's always good to do in any case. But I still felt that he, uh, what he was saying was overblown, and I feel that it's still overblown. And I'm using him because he's one of my news sources, and he's promoting an idea that uh, is sort of, I suppose, now the mainstream opinion coming from Fuchs or whoever, uh, or, or Fauci, or, or whoever the guy is, but there's other experts out there, like some fellow by the name of Eonitis from Stanford, who uh, does epidemiology and other such things, and uh, in essence, what he had said was, look, we do not have enough data for us to start panicking about this disease like we are course, and what it's going to do to the economy. I mean, my friend owns a German restaurant, this Tom's Dish, and I called him, and I said, hey, how are you doing? And he said, well, not so good. And, uh, you know, I can't always cook, so I get takeout. Uh, takeout is still available at some places. And at the two or three restaurants that I've been to so far, they seem pretty bummed, and when I walk in there, they're super, super, like, weirdly thankful because they're barely getting any customers. And so I, I thought the Chinese restaurants would be open, but they're not. And, and this is going, we were already in a poor economy. There's, they were saying, oh, Corona is causing this. No, 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 no. There's these bubbles that are created from the way that our monetary policy works. It's just the nature of the beast and you can't always print your way out of it. And when you do, you know, it might, solve the problem eventually, although it really doesn't just push it under the rug. Yeah, so on top of that strained economical situation, we're now preventing people from working, from earning a living. This is having a ridiculous impact on, like, a horrific, to the point of ridiculousness, effect on the, on the working and middle classes. Um, yeah, so let's look at this epidemiologist article. Uh, I gotta pull up my Word document. It was called... Hmm. Well, I guess I'll just have to find it. Through Derbyshire's article, which is how I originally found it, Derbyshire is a contributor to ones.com. I'm not particularly on board with all of his observations, but he is a legit sort of academic -y guy. And, uh, yeah. Does have useful observations, and him and the folks over at Viva Fry's vlog are, uh, the ones that got me thinking about this Eonidas fella. Huh. So, where is that damned article from when this recent? That's really annoying. Yeah, John Derbyshire is still a coronavirus agnostic, but he's wearing a mask. So basically, John Derbyshire is actually married to a Chinese woman that I mentioned him before when I was talking about that uh, Chinese man whose death was being warned, the ophthalmologist who had blown the whistle, the corona was outbreak, and this is the guy that wrote it. But he's also looking at different people putting forward their information and saying, I can't draw a conclusion from this. So if he can't draw a conclusion from this and there's an expert that's saying 
that, uh, hey, look, we don't have enough data to know like how deadly this is. It does can't really craft a good response. And the former physicians like Ron Paul are saying, hey, I'm going to compare this to the flu for the sake of context. People like Tim Pool need to stop yelling about how everybody that takes that line of thought is an idiot and an asshole and a basement dweller. I believe, I don't know if he was referring to, to people of that position, but he said, you need to mind your own business, dude. This is a, this is a global crisis and you're on the internet reporting the news. Maybe he was talking about people that had, that were shitting on him for trying to sell survival food, which I understand that is annoying. The guy, just because he's making a profit off of something doesn't mean it's not useful. Granted, by it takes a hell of a long time to get to you, but because when I when I went on the website, it was like eight weeks for the damn food to order because of well, everybody was spazzing out and buying it. But anyway, just just little bits of observation is going to be a very random and formal one. Because again, I kept saying this daylight savings time is still tripping me out. It's seven o'clock right now, almost seven to seven, seven minutes to seven o'clock, and I just yeah. Find the damn link at the Eonidas article. Friggin' hell. Yeah, here it is. It's from Stat, which is supposed to be Statisticians Magazine, and it's called A Fiasco in the Making. As the coronavirus pandemic takes hold, we are making decisions without reliable data. So let's let's take a look. Let's go to the bottom first, and I'll tell you exactly who Mr. Eonidas is. John P. A. Eonidas is professor of medicine and professor of epidemiology and population health, as well as professor by courtesy of biomedical data science at Stanford University School of Medicine. Professor by courtesy of statistics at Stanford University School of Humanities and Sciences and co-director of the Meta Research Innovation Center at Stanford, metrics at Stanford University. So that seems like a pretty solid expert guy with biomedical background and statistics background to analyze the situation of an outbreak that also does epidemiology. Yeah, that seems like the kind of guy you'd want to be listening to instead of feeding your pet fucking theories. I'm just saying... I just, I don't like it when people get smarmy. I don't like smartest guy in the room syndrome. It pisses me off. Fucking hell, dude. All right. <clears throat> so, let's just read through the whole damn article. Fuck it. The current coronavirus disease, COVID-19, has been called a once-in-a-century pandemic. But it may also be a once-in-a-century evidence fiasco. At a time when everyone needs better information, from disease modelers and governments to people quarantined or just social distancing, we lack reliable evidence on how many people have been infected with SARS-CoV-2 or who continue to become infected. Better information is needed to guide decisions and actions of monumental significance and to monitor their impact. But Alex, you might say, this article is old. No, it isn't. It's from March 17th. And the data that's come out with like maybe several thousand more deaths, uh, or maybe not even deaths, maybe several thousand more uh, cases, you would expect to see those cases, that number in those tens of thousands don't necessarily mean that the people are going to die. Like there's very low chance that Rand Paul, to give a, a kind of a, a famous example of someone who's recently been infected is going to die. Yeah. Draconian countermeasures have been adopted in many countries. If the pandemic dissipates, either on its own or because of these measures, short-term extreme social distancing and lockdowns may be bearable. How long, though, should measures like these be continued if the pandemic turns across the globe unabated? And here is some recent news. So uh, at least finally Trump is talking about kind of a ballpark of when he wants this done with and he says by Easter, which is April 12th, it's a couple of weeks from now, but how many businesses can uh, survive a couple of more weeks of being shut down, eh? 
I don't know. Like I said, I think this is an observation I got from uh, we have a Fry's vlog. Hey, it didn't take that long for the Great Depression to set on for uh, when businesses were shut down for for like a period of just a few months or so. I think it happened then. So do we want to go back to a Great Depression with the population that we have? Granted, we've got technology and shit, but that might just make things more clusterfucky. Uh, right. How can policymakers tell if they're doing more good than harm? Yeah. How can they? Because right now they're just up there preening, posturing, and there's a bunch of soccer mom syndrome anywhere with hand sanitizers. And I could, I could tell you a thousand goofy, ridiculous stories of just things that are psychologically comforting. It's like swimming in shark infested waters, but having a little knife, you know? I mean, maybe if you bop it on the nose with a knife, but you'd have to, you'd have to really be on guard. And if you're still showing up to work and you're going to your various places, that's a necessity to go to. And there's somebody there that's put COVID into the air or into something that you touched. You're probably going to get it. And you're probably, if you're not having a pre-existing condition or old, going to be okay, probably. And it probably is not super reassuring, but this is, I mean, let's, let's read on to find out just how ridiculous this is in terms of statistics, numbers, and scientific data. Okay. Vaccines or affordable treatments take many months or even years to develop and test properly. Given such timelines, the consequences of long-term lockdowns are entirely unknown. The data collected so far on how many people are infected and how the epidemic is evolving are utterly unreliable. Given the limited testing to date, some deaths and probably the vast majority of infections due to SARS-CoV-2 are being missed. We don't know if we're failing to capture infections by a factor of 3 or 300. Yeah, that's a, that's a big old jump there from 3 to 300. Three months after the outbreak emerged, most countries, including the U.S., lack the ability to test a large number of people, and no countries have reliable data on the prevalence of the virus in a representative random sample of the general population. And that's important if you want to draw fucking policy decisions to have, but they don't have it. This evidence fiasco creates tremendous uncertainty about the risk of dying from COVID-19. Reported case fatality rates, like the official 3.4% rate from the World Health Organization, cause horror. That's the official statistics, 3.4%. It's causing horror. Then there's a dash. What does it say after the dash by this epidemiological expert? And are meaningless. Oh, okay. So they're scaring the shit out of you for no reason. What else is new under the sun? Patients who have been tested for SARS-CoV-2 are disproportionately those with severe symptoms and bad outcomes. <coughs> Patients who have been tested for SARS-CoV-2 are disproportionately those with severe symptoms and bad outcomes, like the people in Italy who were older and some of them had up to three different critical conditions. And I think Tim Pool in one of his videos said, that's not speculate. That's not speculation. That's just looking at something and saying, hmm, there's something here. There's a factor here that's kind of important to note when you're trying to assess the validity of a response. He's smarter than that. All right, I'm done being mad at my boyfriend. Let me continue. Yeah. Patients who have been tested, I'll just gonna say it again, disproportionately those with severe symptoms and bad outcomes. As most health systems have limited testing capacity, selection bias may even worsen in the near future. The one situation where an entire closed population was tested was the Diamond Princess cruise ship. That's where the outbreak of COVID-19 happened, and it's very small area which is a great vector for disease because they're sharing a ventilation system on the ocean yada yada and blah -de do yeah so the death rate among the people infected with covid would be 0.125 percent if we use data from the 
princess. But since this estimate is based on extremely thin data, there were just seven deaths among the 700 infected passengers and crew, the real death rate could stretch from five times lower, 0.025, to five times higher, 0.625. It is also possible that some of the passengers who were infected might die later, and the tourists may have different frequencies of chronic diseases. A risk factor for worse outcomes with SARS-CoV-2 infection than the general population. Adding these extra sources of uncertainty, reasonable estimates for the case fatality ratio in the general U.S. population vary from 0.05% to 1%. And again, if we look at, you know, the flu rates, it's probably somewhere around that area. I I'm taking it, if not higher. So this being equivalent or less bad than the flu does not make you an idiot to say. I'm sorry, like, I don't know if that's actually going to end up being true or not in the long run, but the people that have been pointing this out are not fucking stupid. They're not just pulling it out of their ass, and this Boy Scout fucking bullshit needs to be knocked off. And this is not just, I'm not just talking to, uh, about Tim Pool, I'm talking about people who are morally preening, virtue signaling about this shit. Okay, because there's more than one problem that arises from this virus, for instance, economic problems. And you might say, oh my God, you care more about money than health. No, 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 no. Money is tied to health. You have to be able to feed yourself and your family and to go to the doctors and the hospitals without all, all this bullshit going on, without all this freak out going on. They go, oh, well, if, if uh, we don't quarantine and things in the hospitals, will be, well, based on this evidence right now, we don't really know that. And the normal normal operation of things is completely knocked out of whack. So there's going to be uh, less people, you know, reporting themselves in, or there's going to be more people trying to figure out if they have COVID or not, coming into the doctor's office in a panic, flooding them, because I, I had to take my granddad for a routine appointment. And when I called, those people were, were swamped. Uh, so... Now, it's a very small local doctor's office. I'm just saying, like, that there's just lots of consequences to this. And when somebody brings up a contrary consequence to the ones that you're proposing, that doesn't make them fucking stupid. This is a discussion we all need to have. And so this makes me even more angry at people like YouTube and Twitter, especially Twitter. Like, uh, Jimmy Dore did a great segment on what the fuck, our Twitter? Is Twitter a doctor? They're, they're sitting there and they're going to fucking police what people are saying about this virus. Hey, that's what China fucking did. That, that didn't end very well, did it? The censorship. Free flow of information is very fucking important. And there's more than one way to stop the free flow of information. One is to bully people by making them feel like idiots and versions and basement dwellers for conspiracy theorists. And the other is to straight up censor. They're both equally bad. Stop doing it. Anyway. That huge range markedly affects how severe the pandemic is and what should be done. Hmm, doesn't it? A population-wide case fatality rate of 0.05% is lower than seasonal influenza. Oh. If that is the true rate, logging down the world with potentially tremendous social and financial consequences may be totally irrational. And again, when we're talking about social consequences, suicide, depression, family strife. Hey, I love my family. A lot of people I know love their families very, very much. A lot of people I think are actually better people in that regard than me because I'm a little ornery from time to time and and, and like I, I need my little sulking space. But hey, when you're stuck at home with people, tension arises, absence makes the heart grow fonder. And so when, when you're on lockdown in a stressful situation with your money getting tighter and tighter, which I think is one of the biggest problems in relationships is, is the economic situation of the, of the partnership from what I observed anecdotally from friends and from what I think psychiatrists and people have been saying. That's the situation that we're in because of this. And the, more, the less social cohesion that we have family-wise, the more chaotic things are going to get. Sorry to get all the fucking uh, whatever that asshole's name is, but... Yeah. Could the COVID-19 case fatality rate be that low? No, some say pointing to the high rate in elderly people. But even some so-called mild or common cold type coronaviruses that have been known for decades can have case fatality rates as high as 8%. 
Okay, as high as 8% when they infect elderly people in nursing homes. In fact, such mild coronaviruses infect tens of millions of people every year and account for 3% to 11% of those hospitalized in the U.S. with lower respiratory infections each winter. These mild coronaviruses may be implicated in several thousands of deaths every year worldwide, though the vast majority of them are not documented with precise testing. Instead, they are lost as noise among 60 million deaths from various causes every year. All right, so this is 20 minutes long now. Please go read the article and make up your own mind. Again, I'm no expert, and there is an article that rebuts this one that I will cover uh, sometime soon. But hopefully this gave you something to munch on. And it, some catharsis for people that have been like, hey, why are people calling me stupid for calling into questions these draconian measures that are being taken. You know, like, like I don't care about people. I, I, I care about people. Why are people telling me I don't care about people? Just because uh, I'm not towing the party line of, oh my God, let's freak out and let's listen to these politicians who aren't doctors. Let's listen to, to this expert, but not to that expert. It's just whatever allows people to morally preen, that's what it is. Fuck it. Everybody does it. I mean, even the people that are generally against morally printing will eventually morally preen. And it's frustrating, and I'm sure I'm going to be guilty of it. But anyway, I'm babbling now. So, uh, wishes were a little bit more pleasant, but it's not going to be. Take care, everybody. Stay safe. Uh, prepare, because the fallout from this financial, it could be a hell of a lot worse. It could be getting into a depression. So all that, all those goodies that you have stocked up might actually come in handy, but not for the reasons that you're thinking. Yeah. So, uh, main website, I'm going to go ahead and plug it on, even though we're in the apocalypse, apparently. It's fractaljournal.com, where you'll find stories, ideas, and more. If you like this video, and you would like to see more videos like it, click the goddamn like button and subscribe. Don't be lazy. God fucking damn it. I mean, I'm not the best YouTuber out there, but compared to, to, the, to the shit that I see on a daily basis, come on. Throw me a fucking bone. Cheers.